Hi, hello, welcome once again to my scientific blog Discover Social Sciences and to the series of educational videos I'm preparing right now because it is the winter semester at the university approaching. With the COVID-19 pandemic we go probably very nearly 100% distance learning just for safety. So I am preparing those, theory, uh, those excuse me, series of videos, educational videos in different paths of teaching. Uh, this one in which this video enters is called My Investment, My Teaching and My Science. Uh, I am using my, I ad admit it straightforwardly, my modest experience as a small investor in the stock market to explain, to exemplify uh, the fundamental principles of economics and management and to some extent uh, the principles of the philosophy of science. And in this video, in this part 5 in the series uh, My Investment, My Teaching and My Science, I explain how does the theory of truth or the theories of truth, how do they play out in our economic and business decisions. I gave it a title, My Investment Experience, My Teaching and My Science, Part 5, September Decisions. Uh, why September Decisions? Um, I explained it many times in my previous videos and in the previous posts on my blog, Discover Social Sciences. Uh, that my basic schedule of investment is uh, like pegged on the rent that I collect every month from an apartment I am renting in town. So it is from the economic point of view, my investment strategy is that of using the proceeds of one type of capital assets, namely real estate, to use those proceeds to acquire another type of assets, so financial assets in the stock market. So it is like a rhythm of slow investment every month. The rent that I collect is uh, approximately $670 every month. And so I invest, let's say, by installments. Uh, so that's the background. Now I will explain you uh, right now straightforwardly the options or the strategies which I am considering. Essentially, I have already uh, earned quite a nice return on my investment. Over the last seven months, I have almost 50% of investment of return on the cash invested so it is quite nice given that if i invested for example in government bonds i would have like two percent maybe uh, probably even less so here as i learned progressively how to control my risks and how to provide for risks i also learned how to get a nice rate of return uh, and the three strategies, the, the three options which I am considering now uh, as for my investments to be made in the beginning of September, so in a few days essentially, because I collect the rent on the fifth day of every calendar month. So those three options are the following. First of all, I consider to buy into a combination of relative losers in my present portfolio. Now, there is, a, uh, there is a thing. Frequently, when you see various types of tutorials for investment, uh, would it be books or online tutorials, people tell you, if you lose money on something, sell it out. I experience i learned from my own experience that it is a bad strategy at least for me when i am like more fundamental than technical in my investment it is really a be a bad strategy to sell out something 
to sell out some securities as soon as I am losing money on them. Because a few times I did it. I sold out the investment positions that I was losing money on. And now, from the perspective of a longer time, I am literally cursing myself for having done it. Because if I hadn't sold those investment positions, today I would have on them returns like 300%, 400%. My wisdom that I learned by my own mistakes is that when the prices of some stock go down and there are not really fundamental reasons for those prices to go down, the worst move is to sell out. The worst move is to surrender to panic. Uh, whence that strategy, which I coined up progressively in my own, uh, by my own experience, when I have an investment position and I see that both the business and the industry where that company, that business is located, are economically healthy. When I see that there are prospects for growth in that industry and in that specific business. And I see that I am losing money. I learned that it is a good strategy to buy into that position. The logic is the following. In the past, I bought some of those stocks at a relatively higher price. Now the price is lower. If now I buy an additional chunk of the same securities at a lower price, I lower my reference level for any future returns. It is like saying, okay, I have bought into that piece of real estate. I have already acquired a piece of that real estate at higher prices. Now the prices of the same land or the same buildings are lower. So I use it as an opportunity to buy in, to like to acquire another beachhead in that specific set of capital assets. So that's my philosophy behind, uh, behind that first option. And just to be more specific, I consider buying into Volkswagen and I consider buying into General Electric because those two businesses for a combination of technical reasons and fundamental reasons presently are slightly undervalued and they consider buying into them just to have a better position. Option number two, I open new position in a basket of interesting stocks in biotech, medicine and IT, so information technologies. I have some, uh, let's say, I have uh, some investment positions in view. For example, I have a few interesting gaming companies in view, which seem to be promising in the biotech and medicine as well. I can see a few companies. Well, biotech and medicine, it's obvious. It is the pandemic. Uh, I have al already made a ton of money uh, in by investing in biotech and medicine companies, especially in the Polish stock market. Uh, so I and I assume that this trend will go on like for many months until we get rid of the virus or until we get so familiar with the virus that it will not affect our social our social life anymore. And finally, option number three, uh, I open new positions in some so-called blue chips like Facebook or Zoom. Blue chips, essentially in the investment jargon, are big companies. Uh, with a very large capitalization in the stock market. Those companies are either component companies of some stock market index, or they are very close to being a component of that index. And Facebook or Zoom are interesting in that respect, maybe Microsoft, something that really climbs. The risk with those blue chips is that in this case, I essentially jump on an ascending wave. Any ascending wave will reach a peak at some point and then it will slump. Subsequently, it can, it can ascend and grow even more. Yes, it is true. But for the moment, on the short run, like in the perspective of a few weeks, if I jump on those blue chips, 
I risk to find myself quite quickly like on the other side of, of the peak and the price can descend. So these are my options. And now the theory of truth as applied to that specific case. Here I am referring to another video which I made in the series of Philosophy of Science. You can try to find it. Uh, I use uh, three theories of truth to show you how we can apprehend such decisions with like uh, philosophical and scientific rigor. So, question, what is true? First of all, I can apply the probabilistic theory of truth by Pierre Simon, Marquis de Laplace, so this Laplace, the famous mathematician. Uh, so, essentially, we find the truth in the greatest possible probability of the relevant phenomena happening. Uh, truth is to be found where the greatest probability is to be found. Phenomena which can reasonably assume to happen with the greatest possible likelihood are the truth. And now an, uh, answer number two from a completely different take, from the take of the hermeneutical philosophy and more specifically from the writings of Hans Georg Gadamer, the German philosopher, Truth is to find in the aesthetic experience of beauty and in the connection with our historically grounded culture. It sounds funny, but when you think about it, we very, when we hesitate what is true and what is false, very frequently what we label as true is the claim or the statement which is more in line with our historically grounded cultural background, for one, and secondly, what, is, what inspires us or what gives us the impression of beauty. We choose beautiful claims to be, truth, uh, to be true rather than like ugly claims to be true. Hmm? It might be misleading, yet it is the way that we shape our understanding. And finally, answer number three to the question, what is true? So, truth is the most functional representation of reality as regards one's capacity to maximize rewards from the environment. And here I refer to a much more modern theory, which is called the interface theory of perception. So, according to that, third answer, when I have different claims or different statements about reality, I try to understand which of those claims is the most in line with the rewards that I expect to get from the environment. And here, of course, rewards are a broad category. The absence of danger or the absence of punishment is also a reward in that sense. Now, common misconceptions about those theories of truth, before I go further into applying those theories of truth uh, to my investment uh, options, to my investment decisions for September. Misconception number one, truth is self-explanatory and self-evident. No, it is an illusion or it is a loop of self-reinforcement. Once we have assumed that something is true, it is just easier for us to reduce the cognitive dissonance by assuming that what we have once claimed as true is like self-explanatory and self-evident, but it is just a reduction of our cognitive uh, dissonance. So, if we don't even try to explain or verify a claim, it is our choice based on cognitive limitations and not in an inherent property of the phenomena in question. Now, second misconception. Beauty, beauty has nothing to do with truth. It is false. Uh, the aesthetic experience is one of the deepest kinds of experience that a human being can have. 
the experience of distinction between beauty and ugliness is fundamental. And you can find many scientific theories which are labeled as beautiful. I know many mathematicians who used to say that if they have alternative ways of formulating a mathematical theory, they choose the most elegant and the most beautiful. It is that intuition that beauty or the meaning of beauty has some deep reflection in our perception of reality. Beautiful things are like the right combination of chaos and order. Now, the third misconception. Truth is different from opportunistic payoff. It might be, but it not necessarily is. We need to be aware that we are living organisms, that we all struggle for survival in a brutal and unforgiving environment. I know, you go out into the street, it is a nice day, around it is safe, you just go to the nearest store to buy some food, and you could ask yourself, where is that brutal and unforgiving environment? Well, wait until electricity and current water are cut off from the neighborhood. And within the next 48 hours, you will see how brutal and unforgiving environment you are living in. I guarantee you. So truth, yes, is very likely to be functional, not really ontological. And finally, the fourth misconception which comes to my mind, which I find useful to like clear out, it's, is that we cannot and do not estimate probability at the intuitive level. It is that misconception that probability is just a mathematical concept. No, probability is something deeply rooted in our way of perceiving reality. We instinctively register, our brain registers the frequency at which different phenomena happen. And we are used to consider the most recurrent phenomena, so the phenomena to which attach the greatest probability, we are used to consider them as like the skeleton, the structure of our reality. And the less likely a phenomenon is to happen, so the more, let's say, the more volatile or the most uncertain is the happening of a phenomenon, the less importance we attach to it. There is even a whole theory in the philosophy of science and in mathematics and in economics called the black swan theory. It is the theory which assumes that in our culture, in our thinking, we have a mechanism which uh, makes us sort of include unusual disturbing phenomena uh, into like the ordinary stream of happening. Eh? We tend to reduce our cognitive dissonance. So now I return to my decisions. And here you have that claim that decisions are choices between alternative options. Just to make it clear in the context, I will return two slides or three slides back to the options that I am entertaining right now in my investment. So I have those three options. Option one, I buy into a combination of relative losers in my present portfolio. Option number two, I open new positions in a basket of interesting stocks in biotech, medicine and information technologies. And option number three, I open new positions in big blue chips like, first, like Facebook or Zoom. I have a limited amount of money to invest. It is like those $670 uh, for this month. I don't consider to sell out any of the investment positions I have now. So I have a limited amount of money. And I, at the end of the day, if, an, if I want to make like a compromise between these three strategies, I need to go for something because I have a limited amount of capital to invest. I have to choose something. In this case, so in this sense, decisions are choices between alternative options. So there are, 
and investment decisions are choices between different allocations of capital. And my basic strategy, which I try to follow, to follow consistently, uh, is to invest like in four different fields. Information technology, renewable energies, biotechnology, and to invest in whatever else grows contingently to the pandemic. So I noticed that, uh, for example, the logistics sector, so the sector of logistics and express deliveries, is growing due to the pandemic because um, uh, express deliveries have, or door-to-door -door deliveries, have largely replaced and supplanted uh, what we normally would purchase in stores. So yes, I am earning money on the pandemic. It might seem like ethically dubious, but would it be ethically acceptable to lose money on the pandemic? Probably not. By the way, uh, as for those renewable energies, I have intuitions which go like beyond straightforward categorization of companies into that sector. For example, I opened three investment positions in three American uh, in three I'm sorry German automotive companies in BMW, in Daimler and in Volkswagen. Why? Because they all develop electric cars. Electric cars on the long run favor uh, the development of the market of electricity and that in turn favors the development of new power installations based on renewable energies. So that's my investment strategy. So in, from the point of view of the theory of truth, this is, these are like my assumptions. This is the way I go and within the, let's say, the limits set by that strategy, I choose between different options. Now, against the background of those theories of truth, that general strategy of mine is a combination of two. There is a component of beauty because I wanted that strategy to be aligned somehow with my ethical principles, like about my attachment to renewable energies. It is very largely opportunistic or probabilistic because I assume that in the presence of the pandemic, biotechnology will grow, IT will grow. So this is that probabilistic, that Laplacian component of my strategy. Now a few comments about the, my own experience from the point of view of those three theories of truth in my investment. First of all, my probabilistic experience. So I refer now to the theory of truth as probability by Marquis de Laplace. First of all, I discovered that there are different layers of probability as it comes to investing in the stock market. In the beginning, I was paying attention mostly to things that change quickly like daily or weekly swings in stock prices. Intuitively, I went mostly into those probabilities. But with time, I have learned to mind the things which change at a slower rhythm. So first, I started by inventing my own analytical method based on a general methodology of mean reversion. So I started to calculate the so-called mean reverted prices. And a mean reverted price of a stock is essentially its current price like pitched against its uh, long-term moving average price and its long-term moving standard deviation of price. So I started to observe trends in prices rather than, th than short-term variations. And I started to associate with uh, those trends with fundamental traits of individual businesses and finally fundamental traits of whole industries. So I can say that as regards the probabilistic theory of truth, in my own investment decisions, I have progressively evolved from looking at short-term probabilities 
towards looking at long-term probabilities. So I have intuitively learned to like kick out of my attention span everything that happens shortly. So the probabilistic truth of my investment decisions is that truly the best ones, so the best investment decisions, are those which bring me steady ascending trends amongst the inevitable short-term twists of action in the stock market. In that sense, I am much more a fundamental investor than a technical one. Now, the aesthetic and cultural experience in my own investment decisions. So, of course, business is supposed to be coldly calculated. Still, I discovered and now I understand that in my investment decisions, I have formed something like an ideal of beautiful achievement, like an expected state of beautiful achievement. That state of beautiful achievement is a complex vision. Uh, I superimpose like direct satisfaction with the outcomes reached. So I take that, oh, I have just made like 40% of return on that stock. I combine it with some sort of expected praise from my social environment. I discovered it recently. I had a conversation with a guy who maybe will be my business partner in the future. And he asked me, like, what, what do you do for a living? And I said, OK, I am a, a teacher at the university. I am a researcher and I am a small investor in the stock market. And I have that strategy which works quite nicely, which gives me that high return on investment. And then in my mind, I noticed something like, oh, that's cool to present myself to my like a or broader social environment as a successful small investor in the stock market. So that's a part of that complex aesthetic vision of my achievement as an investor. And I know now that intuitively and almost unconsciously or subconsciously, I align my investment decisions on that expected ideal state of beautiful achievement in investment. I know it can sound funny. I know it can sound like in contradiction with that coldly calculating strictly mathematical vision of business. Yet I know that I have it in me. So if I have that mechanism of thinking in my mind, it's better to understand it, to acknowledge it consciously. And finally, the functional truth of my investment decisions. So the reference to truth as, uh, let's say, as, as something that gives me good payoffs from my environment. So I have that one central metric that you can see here in the screen. So the nominal value of assets, excuse me. So that nominal value of assets, whoa the nominal value of assets in my investment portfolio or on my investment account divided by the nominal value of cash paid into my investment account. This ratio, that rate of return is, well, it is supposed to be above one and the margin that I have above one in that coefficient is the measure of my success. And from time to time, I check my portfolio with that metric. And this gives me like the end of the day, the bottom line assessment of whether my strategy in the stock market is OK or not. OK, so that was a piece of quick intellectual training in which I combined uh, philosophy, the philosophy of science and the theory of truth and very pragmatic, down to earth decisions about money and about investment. As usually, I hope it served both as an understanding of the philosophy of science and as an understanding of what the hell are we supposed to do as small investors in the stock market. As usually, I end with wishing you to enjoy life and to have fun with science. Bye.